Hello everyone and welcome to our next video in the series. Today we will be covering convergence. This video might be a long one so I won't ramble on, let's get started. So what is different about GAs when compared to other classical systems and why do we need to check for convergence at all? To explore this let's consider a much simpler example. Say that I want to calculate the shortest path between two of our towns. This is a pretty common problem. I'm sure you've used Google Maps when you're trying to get directions somewhere. Now Google Maps is a little bit smarter than just choosing the shortest path. It also accounts for how busy roads are, toll roads and all sorts. But here let's just try and get the shortest path. Let's bring up a map of our towns. For the sake of this example you can see that I've removed a bunch of the potential paths. Let's say that we want to get from here to here. Well, this is a pretty simple problem to solve with something like a graph search algorithm. For example, here we could use something like Dijkstra's algorithm, or A star. Let's see what that would look like. If you're like me and you haven't used Dijkstra's algorithm in a short while, let's just go over the steps now. We start off with our initial node and our goal node. Every node has a flag indicating whether it has been visited or not. Every node also has a travel cost, the shortest path that we have found to it so far. As we have not visited any of the towns yet, they will all be initialized with some arbitrarily large value, infinity. Starting with our initial node, we will explore all of its neighbors. If the path that we have found to them is less than the previous shortest path recorded, we will update the value. We then add all of the nodes to our list of available next nodes to go to. We then go to the node with the shortest total distance that has not been visited. This guarantees that when we are exploring a node's neighbors, we can guarantee that the path we have already found to that node is the shortest path to it. We then explore each of this node's neighbors, and if the path is shorter than the existing, we replace it. When we first find a path to our destination town, we don't immediately stop because there might be another path that is shorter. We continue on this process until our destination town has been marked as visited, which implies that there are no other paths going into it that could be shorter than the path we have already found. And that's it. We have a path from our start town to our end town, and we can say with 100% confidence that it is the shortest path and that my Uber Eats knows how to get here in a timely manner. So how does this compare with our GA? Well, we can never actually guarantee that the solution that we have found as a result of our GA is optimal. However, typically the problems that we are solving using GAs are too complex, either computationally or conceptually, to use traditional methods that could guarantee optimality. So how do we know when to stop our GA from running? Well, one way to do it is the way we've been doing it so far. We just let it run, and when we're happy with the result, we stop it. But I'm not really a huge fan of any solution that requires manual input. I prefer an automated solution. There are some pretty cheap services like Amazon's AWS and Microsoft's Azure that can run your program on pretty beefy computers, and they usually charge by the minute. So potentially budget could be a limiting factor, like just run until we run out of money. But if we run our GA on one of these services, we could actually find a solution that we'd be happy with quite quickly. And if we had a budget of $100 for cloud compute, we might have just wasted $95 of it. What we could do is run it on AWS, but then put a cap on the maximum number of generations we're going to run. So maybe with that, we only waste $50. Or maybe the solution that we get back isn't quite the best that we could have gotten if we'd let it run for a little bit more time. Perhaps we're solving a problem for a customer, and the customer has given us some minimum requirements that they want to hit, some amount of money they want to make as a result. So we could use that as our exit condition but we could potentially run the system for a little bit longer and make them more money. Wouldn't we want to do that to take them from a satisfied customer to a thrilled one? It would almost be certainly better for both parties long term. So what we really need is some method that keeps track of our improvement, and if our result doesn't get better after a number of generations, then to stop the GA and return the result. But how would we know the correct number of generations to let it run with no improvement before we stop it? 
I'm sure that you've come up with a few potential other ways we could manage this situation. Maybe you even have some that don't require as many considerations. If you have, please share them down in the comments below. Unfortunately, however, the answer to most of the questions asked previously is, it depends. There is not a perfect answer that will work for every problem that you come across. Furthermore, almost all of the points mentioned above should be considered when making our decision. So today, we will be implementing two of these approaches, the maximum generation count and the no improvement counter. So the first one of those is super simple, let's dive in and implement it now. The first thing that we are going to do is split all of our GA parameters out into a separate class. So let's create a new class in our genetic algorithm folder and let's call it GA config. Then let's update this to be a public static class and then we will add a new public static int and we will call it max generations. So for now, we're just going to set this to a value of 40. This is pretty low, but it will likely do for us here. And then we will come back later and we will update it. The next thing that we are going to do is go to our configuration class and we're going to move our mutation chance variable. And then we're going to paste that in our GA config. Then we will need to update the two references to it in the world class by changing configuration to GA config and then pasting that again to the line below. Lastly, we will scroll up and we will move our population count variable also into our GA config class. Then let's change it to a static property. Then we will jump back to our world class and we will have to update all six references of population count to now be GA config dot population count. And lastly here. So let's scroll back up to the top of our world class and create a new public int and we will call it generation counts. We will give it a public getter and a private setter and we will give it an initial value of zero. Then moving down to our do generation method, let's increment the counter when starting each generation. We then want to stop optimizing when generation count is equal to max generations, but we probably don't want our simulation to immediately end. So let's go to our game class and we'll update our do generation code and add to our if statement and world.generation count is less than ga config dot max generations. Awesome. So we currently have a generation time of 0.2 seconds. In other words, we are doing five generations per second. So we should expect the GA component of our simulation to run for 10 seconds and then after that stop. I also want some visual feedback to indicate when the GA has completed. So we are going to go to our simulation screen class and we're going to add a public method that returns void and it will be called set GA completed and it will take in no parameters. Then inside the braces, let's write total distance string dot text color is equal to color dot green. Then let's go to our game class and add an if statement at the bottom of our main loop. If world dot generation count is equal to ga config dot generation count then inside the brackets, we will call screen dot set GA completed. So this will only get called a single time, the very first time that we hit our max generations. Great, so now let's hit run. And we can see that our GA has quickly found a maximum and we can see that we hit it pretty early and the rest of the time we're just stuck at this maximum. But after our 10 seconds are up, our GA has finished running and the text has turned green. So great, this is pretty exciting for me anyway. This is the first real time that the GA has given us a final answer. That said, we don't want to be using the maximum generations as our end of optimization trigger because it is very likely that we just wasted a whole lot of clock cycles, but don't take my word for it. 
Let's go back to the world class and add a new public list of doubles. And we will call it fitness over time. It should have a public get and a private set. And let's initialize it in our constructor. So we can type fitness over time is equal to a new list of doubles. Then let's scroll down to the do generation method. After each generation, we will explicitly grab the fitness of our best individual by typing var best fitness is equal to population dot first dot get fitness. And because we've just ordered our population by fitness, population dot first will be our fittest individual. Then we will add this fitness to our list by typing fitness over time dot add and we will pass in our best fitness. Lastly, let's go back to our game class and when we flag our simulation screen that the GA has completed, we will also copy the fitness text to the clipboard. In C Sharp, we can do this by typing clipboard.setText. If you don't have a using statement for system.windows, Visual Studio will prompt you to add one here and we will pass in string.join double and then this joins a list of values by some delimiter. So in this case here, we'll pass in the delimiter first, which is a comma. And then we'll pass in world dot fitness over time. So we're essentially converting our list of doubles into a string of comma separated values. Great. So we now have a way of dumping this data to file so that we can quickly graph them using our favorite tools. Well, probably tool because Excel reigns supreme. Lastly, in order for our main application thread to interact with the clipboard, we just need to jump back to our program class and above our main method, add STA thread. Excellent. So with that out of the way, let's hit run again. Awesome. So we can see our program. It's slowly improving. And now our text has turned green. So our values should have been copied to the clipboard. So let's see what those fitness values look like over time. Interesting. So we can see that over the first couple of generations, we see a few big improvements in the fitness. And as time goes on, this quickly levels out to be flat. So we probably need to ask ourselves a few questions here. Why are there so few improvements and why do we level off so quickly? Now there are likely a few reasons for each of these. The first is something that I mentioned but didn't show in the last video and that was that all our individuals quickly become identical due to the way that we are testing for uniqueness. The second reason is that the problem is relatively tiny. This results in us having a few large jumps because there isn't much diversity and quickly coming to some maximum. So let's address both of those now. Going back to the code, let's move over to our configuration class and set use random towns to true. And let's set the town count to 50. Then let's jump over to our GA config class and change our population to 1000 and our maximum generation count to be 150. Awesome. So let's run that again. Okay, so things are a little more interesting this time and slightly harder to see. Sorry if you're watching at a lower resolution. I will speed things up a bit here. Awesome, so it now looks like we have hit our maximum. So let's look at how our fitness values tracked over time. Now that is probably looking a lot closer to what you're expecting to see the first time. So in our second case, we needed significantly more than 50 generations before our GA would settle on a result. But looking at this graph, I can't even tell if the GA has converged on an answer. But let's say that we did. We could hard code this value in, but that's not a good long-term solution. What if you wanted to try running with 60, 70, or even 100 towns? Well, you'd be out of luck and our GA would just return a value much higher than it could have if we just left it running for a bit longer. So let's implement our no improvement counter check. This one probably doesn't require any lead up. Jumping to our GA config class, let's add a new public static int called max no improvement counter. And let's give it a value of 20. So why am I using 20? 
no particular reason at all. Our GA is running one generation every 0.2 seconds, so this would be four seconds, and I didn't really want to wait any longer than that. Again, this is situation dependent. If I was running this overnight on some very complex problem, I'd happily have it run for 10 minutes without improving. Then let's go to our world class and add a new public int, no improvement count, with a public get and a private set. And again, we'll explicitly initialize it with a value of zero. Then let's also create a private double variable called previous fitness. Then let's move down to the constructor and give it an initial value of double dot max value. Now let's jump down to our do generation method. So we can type if best fitness is equal to previous fitness, well, then we want to increment our no improvement counter because our fitness is the same as the last time we ran. Otherwise, we want to update the previous fitness and we will set the no improvement counter to zero. Awesome. So the last thing that we are going to do is jump to the top and add a new public bool and we're going to call it has converged and we will set it equal to generation count is greater than ga config dot generation count or no improvement count is greater than ga config dot max no improvement count then let's jump back to our world class and we'll update our if statement to instead check for not world dot has converged and then down the bottom we will add or world dot no improvement count is equal to ga config dot max no improvement count. Awesome, so now that we have our no improvement counter set up, let's go back to our ga config and turn our max generations way up to about 10,000. So this is effectively our failover in case something really funky is going on with our ga. That'd be pretty hard to happen in this very simple case, but in more complicated situations, it's not crazy. And running for 10,000 generations is roughly equivalent to 12 minutes or so, so that's not a big deal. So now that we have done all of that, let's hit play. I will speed things up again here so we aren't sitting here forever. Okay, so a few things. That was really interesting to watch. There are points that you can see where it's found two solutions that are both equally good but quite different, and it's switching between the two as both are getting simultaneously better. That was really fascinating to watch. So let's get that fitness graph up. Great, so this is looking almost perfect. We can see that some significant improvements at the start of the GA fixes the horrendous mistakes of the random spawning. And as time goes on, the improvements get smaller as the solution becomes more refined until we get our final result. Okay, so in this video we have covered convergence of a single fitness value where we were only checking the convergence for the fittest individual and we have no idea what is happening to the remainder of our population. For instance, what percentage of the population has the same fitness? Do the paths vary between individuals with the same fitness? Does it even matter? Well, for now, no. Here we've said that we only care about a single thing, the path that covers all towns with the shortest distance. So that begs the question, what if I also care about other factors? What if I also care about the amount of fuel that we used? Or I want to minimize the amount of toll roads used? What if I want to have some trade-off between fuel use and distance traveled, but I don't yet know which is more important? Well, that is the challenge question for today. How can we account for additional objectives during our optimization? And how will that impact our convergence checks? Good luck, leave your comments with suggestions down below and I will see you all in the next one.